just pulled up. Something's just let go. I feel something dragging. It's a tire and my spare is in pieces. Morning guys, great to have you all back for another episode. Yeah, I don't have Dan with me on this trip. Last time we saw you guys, we were saying goodbye. Um, we were on the east coast of the Cape and we just done that Barra Lagoon hike where we didn't catch any big ones, but we saw that giant croc and um, we caught plenty of little fish, but we'd love to spend some more time in there and really get to know the place and find the big fish. And um, we haven't filmed for a few weeks now. We've both been busy working. But um, it's getting warmer and that lagoon is probably getting better and better. So I don't know, I might try and get in there soon and give it another crack, maybe camp out the night. But yeah, Dan couldn't come on this trip. He's busy with work. Back in the real world, I'm a builder and Dan has his own concreting company and he's got a lot on. So it's just me. I'm actually heading, to, heading down the coast at the moment to the airport to pick up a good mate of mine. He's going to come out for a few days so you get to meet him. And uh, at the moment, it's just me and Marley. This is my boy, Miles. He's a dingo kelpie. And uh, he's always come everywhere with me since a little pup, but he's getting a bit old now. Um, we got the trusty little tinny on. Haven't really got a, um, a set plan as to what we we're gonna do for the next few days. Um, we're either gonna go to the West Coast, so back in the Gulf, uh, maybe head over to the East Coast and I don't know, we haven't explored over there for ages. It's hard to get in there on the Cape because uh, all year when the roads are open, it's blowing its tits out. It blows like 30 knots southeast and it's just lumpy and messy and windy and um, it's hard to fish. And then through the wet season, it's, um, it's obviously wet and it's glassy and beautiful, but it's really hard to get in there, particularly with a big boat. So. We're in the build-up at the moment, which just started, which means big storms are brewing every afternoon, but they don't actually rain, so it's really hot, and uh, um, hopefully the winds are backing off, and we're going to get in there. So anyway, I'll see you guys up the road a bit. Saying he can't make it um, due to some family issues, so no 
it's all good. Um, I always try and look at things on the bright side, you know, like it's going to be a silver lining. So I've taken that as an opportunity to, um, from Cairns, I'm heading out straight west out towards Corumba and Normanton. And uh, once I get out there, which is at the bottom of the Gulf for Carpentaria, the base of Cape York Peninsula in Australia. Um, once I get out there, I'm going to start heading north and uh, go down a road I've never been down before, which I'm really excited about. I've always wanted to do this road. Um, so it starts out as the Berg Development Road. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of that, but uh, it starts out as that and then it turns into uh, something else that I've slipped my mind, but I'll, I'll check that later tonight and, um, and I'll let you know tomorrow when we're on the track. Um, but it, it's it's quite remote. It's, I mean, if you've done Cape York before, you've more than likely gone um, from Cairns up through Mariba, uh, Lakeland, and then Laura, and up the, up the PDR, the Peninsula Development Road. Um, whereas this is over on the western side of Cape York um, and hugs the Gulf of Carpentaria and goes up that way. And a lot of the year, it's completely not completely flooded, but the the, um, it crosses so many big rivers uh, in the bottom of the Gulf that they're all impassable. Uh, so you can only do it a certain time of year and I'm going to take this opportunity to give it a crack. Um, I mean it's only me so you're just going to have me and Marley for a, for a few episodes which is going to be different but fun. I'm just going to have to slow down the pace a bit. You know I can't take as many risks without Dan here on board. Um, I've only got one vehicle and person so if there's a snake bite or, um, or you know there's no one there to look after me uh, or um, you know if there's something wrong with the vehicle it's just nice having a good mate there that you trust like I do with Dan uh, to get the job done so this is the end of the sun for the day it is absolutely beautiful uh, we're getting into some great country out here it's really uh, we're, we're crossing the, um, the Great Dividing Range which is always beautiful and um, you know, this time of night, with the sun nice and low like that, and the shadows, it's just stunning country. So tomorrow's gonna be an exciting day. Um, if I get to a nice creek tonight, I'll pull the camera back out. But if not, I'll see you all in the morning. And um, yeah, it's gonna be straight into it tomorrow. We, um, I'll probably go, out, uh, depending on where I pull up now, a few hours of driving in the morning on Bitchman, and then we're gonna hit the dirt and uh, hit this Berg Development Road and um, start heading up, up towards Musgrave, which is where this road connects back onto the King Derp Peninsula Development Road. And we're going to cross some great rivers. Oh, here comes a creek now. Um, some great rivers tomorrow, so I'm excited to see how much water's in them and if we can actually pull a fish out of them. All right, see you soon, guys. So Marley and I have just run down to this creek to have a wash and um, it was a bit nasty, pretty dried up. It's like a big puddle, stunk of cattle. So I'm gonna give that a miss. Hopefully we come across one soon because we've got about 40 minutes of light left. But I mean, how good is this? Don't know if you guys can hear it, but there's not a breath of wind. All you can hear is crickets and flies and this beautiful sunset and this, what, this is what Outback Australia is like there's just no one around and it's just beautiful, it's so peaceful and it's just going to get better from here as we go more remote so stay with us I'm going to put the camera down now and I'll see you guys in the morning Good night.
watch tail eagles up here I want to show you guys. They spooked, one of them's flown off, one's still there chewing on this carcass. Okay, so these guys are everywhere in Australia, right down from the Great Australian Bight, right up here to Cape York. Um, so they're not rare, but you don't really see a lot of them. And when you do, they're really cool. They are massive birds. So he looks pretty content there. Looks like he's chewing on a bit of roadkill, probably a wallaby. And uh, when they fly off, they never fly far. So his partner would have flown up to one of these close by trees. And uh, as soon as you drive away, they're straight back on that carcass. Um, they've got a huge wingspan. I think they're the largest bird in Australia, definitely the largest eagle between them and the frigate. The frigate's a, a seabird. The greater frigate is, is all, has also got like up to a two metre wingspan. And these wedge-tailed eagles, they got big thick legs on them, huge big claws. Hang on, I'm gonna spin the camera around and show you. He's, look, he's looking a bit spooked. And it sounds like there's a car coming behind us. There he is. It's not exactly David Attenborough stuff, but this is the best I've got right now. Here he goes. And he's up there in the tree with his mate. Yeah, and as you can see there, I'll show you. I'll just show you real quick what he's eating. Um, looks like a big kangaroo. There you go. So yeah, not pretty. But that's what they eat. Yeah, they're a bird of prey, so um, or a raptor, which means that they'll take they'll take down um, they'll take down animals like rabbits and things like that. Lots of little anim animals, little marsupials, and they will also. Um, just scavenge, eat what they what they can get. All this roadkill on the side of the road, which is plenty of it around here. Look, there's bones everywhere. Bone there. Something's been killed there. Um, yeah, lots of kangaroos get hit here, and they come in and clean up the carcass. Just so, just trying to give you a bit of a rundown on. Um, setting up the ute here, as you can see we're about to hit the dirt so let me look at all this this just drives me nuts it's a nice spot here where you can pull up obviously I've pulled up here and got out and people obviously thought the same thing it's an easy spot to pull up they get out go to the toilet and just leave their paper uh, so what I'm doing is setting up the ute to be a bit more practical um, I haven't had this ute that long so it's still got a lot of work to do to it um, this box here is what I keep. It's like the pantry, you know, I keep all our food in there and then pots and plates and cutlery and that. So I've got power. I've got a little power point here for fridge and charging and everything. Um, so I want everything on this side basically like a kitchen. So I'm going to take my bags out of the back, put them in the big ARB dustproof, weatherproof bag and lay that in the back. And then I'm going to wire up um, the fridge here to sit on the back seat so I've got a little fuse box behind the seat there I don't know if you can see that but basically I'm gonna um, that's got paint uh, mains power coming off the secondary battery under the bonnet it's like a fuse board there and there's plenty of spare fuse, um, space for fuses so I'm gonna run a Anderson plug off that and plug the fridge in in the car so it doesn't get all dusty and I've got to strap down the outboard motor here I've moved the other box to the other side and then the boat I'm gonna put some new tie down points in the floor in here so I can put the solar panels and everything that I'm not going to use today while I'm driving in the back and then cover the boat up keep the dust out as much as possible so yeah basically just repacking everything a bit of a shuffle and we'll be back on the road so I'm just about to wire up this fridge in the back seat of the car here and um, I just wanted to show you all the tools that you should be carrying on the road when you're in places like this. So we've just got a full socket set here, um, a few parts are in the big box. Um, just, to, just so that you can, you can make changes, you can do this stuff or if you have something happens on the trailer, um, 
I've got a grinder in there and you know metal screws and impact drivers and every, I'll show you in a sec but like just so you can do whatever you got to do you know we've got allen keys we've got spare um anderson plugs big sockets you know little razor blades stanley blades so they're super sharp plumbing tape air fittings um what have we got in here more anderson plugs heat shrink uh this whole box is just drill bits all sizes so um basically you want to be able to repair as much as you can on the road i've got another little spare socket set here all this stuff lives in my big box um battery grinder big what do you call this like a cracking bar so when the nuts are super tight you put your socket on the end of that and uh, you can really get some leverage on it Oh, just screws, pop rivets, um, lots of assorted bolts and washers and all sorts of stuff in there. WD-40 and lanolin spray, grease, uh, spare bearings for the trailer, spare U-bolts for the trailer. We got uh, impact drivers, drills, heaps of batteries in there, um, like zip ties battery meter, electrical, um, like 12 volt fittings. Just, you know, you need to be ready for anything. Well, hopefully anything, so yeah, I better get to it. So we're all strapped down. Everything's been shuffled to suit. And I'm uh, much happier. To see the boat's fully covered there now. Um, just close up these boxes. So yeah, this is just a cheap boat cover, but just ran lots of new straps around it and these these little toggles that pinch onto the, the uh, boat cover they're fantastic they've got little teeth in there and they grip in i've used them before and they work to treat so keep the majority of the dust out of that now as you can see we're on a dirt track we've just hit it so tires are running at the moment at 45 psi and the little trailer tires run at 30 so i'm going to drop the trailer tires down to 20 and the uh the main cruiser tires down to about 32, 30, 32 psi. Um, it's just going to really soften the, the, the drive, less impact on the tires, um, a bit more cushioning. So if you're hitting shaley rocks and that, you're just going to have less punctures. And um, that's that's tried and tested. You know, I've blown tires. For um, one time, I had my little fella; he was asleep, and I didn't want to pull over and let the tires down when I hit the dirt track. So I kept going and um, blew a tire out, 40 psi. Um, so I learned my lesson now, I always let them down now and I think you guys should too. So I've just pulled up to um, put some air back in these tires. I've hit the bitumen and it looks like it's going to be bitumen for about 100 kilometres. So this trailer tyre though, there's something up with it. It's sitting on about 15 psi and it's holding at that, but the valve, you can hear it there. It's bloody stinking hot up here. And uh, we can get on our way. But I've just noticed these, um, this is a native cotton tree here. Now, if I give this tree a good shake, you can normally look around on the ground and look for any sort of the, the pods which are hanging up there in the tree. There you go. Look at all this. All this stuff here is like native cotton. It's just like cotton. And this stuff is brilliant. Brilliant kindling. The indigenous would have used it for dressing wounds. You can boil it right up. It's just like cotton wool. Fantastic stuff, you know. You could, if you cut yourself, you cover it up like this, wrap it up in tape or twine. I suppose they would have used twine. Um, but I like to use it for kindling. It's absolutely amazing. So I'm going to put a bit aside. And we'll get a fire going tonight. About 20 past six. The sun's setting over here, which is just beautiful. It's such a 
such a magical time to, um, to be on the road. You've got to have your eyes open because of all the wallabies. There's a lot more wildlife on the road, which is what makes it so special. Um, just saw a huge goanna back there. Uh, and I grabbed the, the GoPro and ran out after him, but he took off and then bloody fast. So I didn't capture that. I'm pretty buggered, so I don't know how much longer I'll drive for. Today has been just one of those days. Uh, I filmed a bit of it for you guys. I can't even remember what I filmed, but um, just things going wrong, you know. Like uh, what happened? I uh, pumped the tires up, and the compressor got that hot. It is so hot up here at the moment. But the compressor got that hot, and uh, one of the water pipes running to the water pump was touching it and it, uh, it blew out, just melted as it blew out. So yeah I've got to fix that, I've got to come up with like a little sleeve and then zip tie that in between the two pipes and hopefully join it back together. Um, when I was pumping the tyres up I found that the spare on the trailer, um, well the tyre on the trailer was um, uh, going flat which was it turned out to be the valve there's an issue with the valve, the seating of it. So I um, went to throw the spare on and it's the wrong spare on the trailer, which I should have checked before I left, but I just uh, threw the wrong spare on the trailer. But it's just been one of those days, just one thing after the other. Um, there was more. I can't think of it right now, I'm bloody tired. But um, you know, it's another full day on the road. Uh, so hopefully the fun stuff starts tomorrow. I can't wait to start getting into it with you guys. And, and um, get into the adventure, start crossing some of these big rivers and have a fish. And, yeah, but this is all part of it. Big days driving, um, and you know, having issues like that, you just got to have the tools on board. Like I said this morning, to to fix them up. So uh, make good when you're out here in the bush and fix it all when you get home. So uh, yeah, tomorrow's another day. Uh, I wanted to get the drone up in the sky because I imagine this is going to be a ripping sunset. But um, I'm just running out of time. I'm trying to get up to this next little town here to get fuel. Um, I've got to load up heaps of fuel before it shuts so that I can get up early and, um, and move on. Uh, if it's closed, which it probably is, I'm going to have to camp out near town and um, fill up the fuel in the morning, which is going to be like 8 o'clock. <laughs> so there goes another couple of hours. So I can't send the drone up. Sorry guys, I'm just going to keep pushing and um, probably see you guys tomorrow. Good morning guys. Yesterday was a really rough day and um, sometimes when thing goes, things go wrong and they just kind of snowball. If you, I don't know, my wife says that it's because of my, like once one thing goes wrong you get in a bad headspace and then it creates more things to go wrong but sometimes I think she's right because um, that's what happened yesterday it was just one thing after the other and uh, we did a couple of tyres and um, I had to go back to Normanton and get them fixed this morning so it's a, it's a late start we've just hit the track that I wanted to get to so uh, that's the Normanton I think it's Normanton Dimbulla Road which is a corrugated track that does a big loop and comes back out at Chilligo but uh, I'm then going to take a turn off and head up towards Mus Musgrave, up the, um, which joins back onto the Peninsula Development Road. So it's really exciting. This is a track I've wanted to do for a long time. And um, I'm finally, after a few setbacks yesterday, I'm finally on the track. And um, I'm excited to see what's on here. I mean, I've never been on here before. It crosses some really good rivers that I know are brilliant for fishing. Uh, I don't know what time of year you're supposed to be fishing them. But we are at the start of the build up at the moment, which is normally good fishing. Um, a little bit rushed for time, but hopefully I can sneak in there, get the tinny in, or go for a walk, or I don't know, I'll be really excited because, um, yeah, like I said, I, I don't know what to expect. That's the best thing about going to all these new places. Um, I mean, you can keep going to the same spot over and over, and you sort of master that area, you learn a lot about it which is fun sometimes, but I like to explore and find different spots. You know, a bend in the new river and, and finding like an epic structure, like a big fallen tree in a deep hole and a few rocks 
consider like in the wedlock and you just the, that, your excitement just peaks and you just can't wait to get a lure in the water so I don't know what's to come guys I don't know what, what to expect I don't know what I'm going to be showing you guys um, but I'm just going to try and film everything like I said I don't have Dan with me so I can't push it too hard uh, I'm just going to be exploring but taking it easy so whether it's you know hiking with the camera and looking for some cool little creatures or putting the tinny in and going fishing I, I don't know yet So those guys there, I just showed you a um, brogers. Now there's a brogger and a cyrus crane, and the difference is the tiny little colour change on there. Well, the same colour, but the amount of red they have on their cheek is the only difference I can tell. Um, but there's a heap of them in here. I don't know if you can see that with the GoPro. There'd be about 15, 20 of them there. Here comes another flock. Can you hear that? These things are like, they're one of my favourite birds because they're like a prehistoric, they're, they're like a pterodactyl and, they, and their call just pierces through the bush here. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? So yeah, you can hear them from such a long way away and they're normally on water, on like a big um, lagoon, inland lagoons, but at the moment they're just in a big dry paddock here and I'm um, obviously having a feed on something. But they're such a cool bird and to know about my filming style i'm still using a uh, set of binoculars because birds are hard you know you try and get close and they fly away um so yeah i'm using i'm just using a pair of binoculars to to try and capture the footage for you and i know it's not fantastic but um if you guys have got any tricks uh, any gopro attachments or anything like that let me know because um, i want this content to just get better and better and I'm always learning, so... Just pulled over real quick to um, check the map on to find out exactly where we are, how much further I've got to go. I thought I'd show you guys. This is this is the HEMA map app, and it's just brilliant. So it gives you a, um, like we obviously don't have reception right now, but it gives you um, a location of where you are, GPS fix, and um, and then that obviously tracks you wherever you go. So even without reception, you know exactly where you are, and um, then you can pull up. I've told you guys this before, but you can pull up your GPS coordinates. So if you do get in trouble and you make a, a call on the sat phone you can um, give me a GPS coordinates and I'll come and get you. So that's what it's like out here, that's what we gotta have. Anyway, I'm pretty close, I've probably got about 10 kilometers to uh, turn off and, uh, and then I'm gonna start heading down the river, I think. So I'll see you soon. the end of the line guys um, for now anyway but I've been trying to get access into this property for the last week because I don't like we're not allowed to go onto anyone's land without without permission um, even though we're not hunting or anything it's just you've got to do the right thing it's their land whether it's the traditional custodians or um, property managers with um, on cattle stations you need to get you need to get in contact with them first and I've been trying and trying and, and uh, I've been able to get through and I was hoping to just drive out here and uh, and go up to the station and have a good chat with them but I've just come to a gate and they got a pretty obvious sign saying no access unless you've got prior permission so I might I'll call them on the sat phone now I've got the sat phone here so um, I'll try them again one more time and then 
I don't know, change of plans. We'll have to go and try somewhere else. So, so it's about 100 degrees outside. It's so hot up here. Um, so I can't sit outside. Um, with me and Marley are sitting in here in the aircon and I'm um, trying to make a plan and I've got to make some wraps for lunch. Uh, we don't have any fish yet because we uh, still haven't been fishing. So I've just still got uh, leftovers from, from home. Pretty sure we're just going to give up on this idea um, and head across to the east coast for a bit. Hopefully um, chase some barra and uh, even, I don't know, depending on the, on the winds we could punch out a bit. And uh, just picked up a new sounder for the little Timmy, so... Oh, this looks so good, I'm so hungry, it's only 1.30. Um, yeah, got a new sounder, so I'll wire that up. And um, maybe if the, if the winds are okay, we could punch out to the reef and... I don't know, chase some nice fish, so... We'll see, it's a long way from here. It's, it's probably another full day driving to get to the other side, so... Um, and I've got to pick up fuel somewhere along the way. Uh, we've come a long way to get to here where we are um, and it's really hard to give up on the idea but I'm just going to have to at this stage so I just got some drone footage then of this um, this big lagoon I'll show you we're on this big lagoon here which is pretty amazing um, it would actually be a really good really good camp spot but there's several spots along here you'll see in the drone footage but um, again we just don't have permission to be here so I'm just going to move on. I don't like that hanging over me, you know, especially filming. Um, anyway, we're going to move on. I'm going to have a bite to eat and get to the other side. See you soon. and my spare is in pieces. Look at that. What a day. That's bearings and then the tyre. This is more than likely going to be it for the night. Um, I've assessed it, so I've just dragged it up off the road here a bit so we're safe. Um, obviously done a set of bearings, they're completely cooked. Uh, the axle still looks okay in there, which is good. And the hub, so basically, um, and the rim looks okay. The guard's hammered, so I'm just going to get the grinder out, cut that off, get the lump hammer and smash that back. Um, take the jacket up take the wheel off and then I need to try and get this rubber this tire off the rim because my spare 
is in pieces as well. <laughs> so I need to get the, um, I've got a good tire and a, a good tube, but I need to get this tire off the rim and put the other one back on, which is hard to do without a machine. Miles, back here, mate. So, um, yeah, I'd say that's going to take all afternoon and I'm going to have to camp out. You know, I've done about 500 kilometers today and um, probably the last 400 kilometers, I don't think I've seen anyone. But I am getting close to the Peninsula Development Road up ahead here. I don't want to leave the boat here because um, I'm going to smash my light. Yeah, anyway, I've got heaps to fix. But I don't want to leave the tinny here. So I'm going to try and fix it, camp here if I have to, and uh, sort this out. Alright, we're about halfway there, so we've um, taken the old bearings out, which are in here. I'll show you the condition of these things. Look at that. That's all that's left of it. So, old bearings are out, the new bearings are in. Um, now we just need to... Luckily there wasn't too much damage to the axle, there was a bit of a wear mark in it, but I'm hoping that's not going to cause too many issues. Um, now we just got to try and get this old rubber, rubber off the rim and then try and get the new rubber on it, which um, which could be tri quite tricky. So uh, the sun's just about gone down. I'm going to try. I'm going to attack this tire now. See how I go. Then set up camp and make dinner and deal with the rest in the morning. You. Well, it's five past eight. Um, I just got that tire back on the trailer and. Um, Managed to get it on, but the valve in in the tube. So basically, what I had was a rim, a uh, a tire, and a tube, and the and the valve in the tube's a bit shot. So um, it's holding 19 psi at the moment, but um, I don't trust it. So I'll, uh, I'm going to camp here the night. I'm not going to push on any further. I'm absolutely wrecked. It's been a big day driving. Um, bloody sick of driving. I just looked in the pantry box then for dinner and there's you know stuff to make dampers there's bloody there's some nice breadcrumbs for crumbing fish there's all this yummy food and i haven't even stopped yet you know like i feel like all i've done is drive so i'm looking forward to to getting to a good spot and setting up a camp and taking you guys fishing and um, doing some cook-ups and having some fun but at the moment you know these things happen so uh, I'm, I'm just know I'm going to get a good night's sleep knowing that everything's put back together so we've put the new bearings on they're all greased up um, the axle did have that scuff mark in it a bit of a, a bit of a ding and I'm a little bit worried about that but and I've lost the um, bearing buddy which is like a cap that goes over, the, uh, over your, um, your bearing to stop all the dirt and grit getting in there and I'd say that's what's happened I reckon I've lost that today it's filled up with gunk on these dirt tracks because I did 500 kilometers today on dirt um, so I'd say it's filled up with crap, it's chewed out the bearings, shot the bearings and then uh, obviously the tyres just copped all the carnage. Um, but anyway, it's all back together so I'm hoping in the morning it's, it's holding that 19 psi and I can crawl up the road here. I think I've got about 70 odd kilometres to Musgrave uh, which is on the Peninsula Development Road and I'll assess the situation there. And uh, it's a bit risky pushing on from there to the east coast and going fishing, which is, you know, these plans just keep changing. But, um, you know, if I head out, out to the east coast and um, something happens, I don't have a spare tyre anymore, so um, I'd be in trouble. So I think I'll have to head up to Weeper and do some repairs to the trailer and, um, and then get, get back to it. But I'll make that call in the morning. I'm absolutely buggered tonight. I just want to have a cup of tea and some dinner and crawl into the tent and get a good night's sleep. Um, and I know I will. Like, I could have just set up camp and done all this in the morning, but I wouldn't have slept. So knowing that it's all back together, I'm going to get a good night's sleep. Um, anyway, guys, that's going to be a wrap for another episode. I went and saw a couple of property owners today on, on big, big properties, you know, huge big cattle stations to try and get access because um, there's no tracks from where they are to, to the Gulf. So um, I'm sure they'd have they'd have little bloody goat tracks getting down there um, and through the wet season it would be completely swamped. But after the wet, I want to take Dan in there and, and explore into some new country. So all this is going to get better. The more access we get, the better it's going to get. And, um, yeah, the more fun. So 
stick with us, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the morning.